Good morning, boys and girls. Some of you will have seen me here before because, as your headmaster knows, it always gives me great pleasure to, uh, to, uh, <clears throat> what I wanted to say is, it always gives me great pleasure to be asked to award the annual school prizes for diligence, good behaviour and regular attendance. But what some of you may not know is that your headmaster and I used to be pupils here. <laughs> Over 40 years, <clears throat> quite a long time ago. <laughs> In fact, we used to sit next to each other, didn't we, Mr. Grimwood? In this very room. <laughs> <laughs> and if my memory serves me correctly, that is our old desk. Three rows back. <laughs> now, isn't that interesting? <laughs> <laughs> now, well, I thought it might be. And just to prove that I'm not pulling your legs, if the little girl who's sitting in our old desk... Yes, you, Chuck. If you lift that lid, you'll see something that I wrote all those years ago. <laughs> oh, I know it was very naughty of Mr. Grimwood, but I was very little at the time. Go on, dear, <laughs> lift the lid. And what does it say? <laughs> Go on, tell us. Floor Riley's got a big bum. <laughs> I said that'll do. <laughs> Mrs. Onsworth. Of course, someone else wrote that. I only wrote my initials. I M H for Ivy May Henshaw, which I then was. But what I wanted to tell you, boys and girls, is that it was Maggie Street that. Margaret Street Council School that taught me not only the three R's, reading, writing, and arithmetic, but the three G's too. The gospel, playing the game, and to always be good to each other. Three simple rules by which I've tried to live and which, in turn, I have passed on to my own nearest and dearest. Which is why they've all grown up to be sober, hard-working, <laughs> and highly respectable members of the local community. <laughs> Clean in word, thought, and deed. Hilly, telephone. Any Hadfield. Happens you've got a client for you. How do you know I was here? Came <laughs> over. It's 12.30, isn't it? Oh, right. I did it again, didn't I? The reference to Flo Riley's anatomy? <laughs> well, at least you didn't tell them it was me that wrote it. You did it? You naughty little devil. You've no room to talk. When I think what you got up to with Ethel Hitchcock at the Sunday school annual outings... I never got up to anything. Oh. Well, if I did, it was because Ethel put me up to it. <laughs> yeah, I saw her a few weeks back, by the way. Ethel? How is she? She's a widow now. She lives in a big house over Loft House Way. But <laughs> she's still the same. Maybe a little older. A little lonelier. And we all. Come in. Yes, Mildred. Miss says we'll be all right if I go warm. Why? You're not feeling well? If it's my dad. Just had a message. He's had an accident. Oh, dear. Uh, nothing serious, I hope. Serious enough. He's dead. How awful for you, love. I am sorry. Why? I'm not. You were no dad to me. Can I go then? Oh, yes, yes. Uh, I'll come with you, Mildred. I shan't be long, Mrs. Onsworth.
Miss Atkins. Take Mr. Henshaw to the deceased. This way, Billy. Right. Hey, how do you know my name? Oh, I know a lot more about you than that. Lofty Lugs. Lofty Lugs? I haven't been called that since Jubilee Street Junior School. Well, even then, there were only one last. It is. It can't be. Happen it is, Billy. Lyrena. Oh, me and my husband used to run a chip shop. Till he ran off with a barmaid from Batley. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, there's no cause to be. You were never much of a husband, were Percy. You were never much of anything, come to think of it. Well, you must have had other offers. Oh, I did. Lots of them. Some of them even offered to make it legal. No, widowers mostly. After a housekeeper on the cheap, someone to look after the kids. That's no life, is it? Bringing up someone else's children. You're none of your own, then? Married to Percy? He couldn't father a whip it, that one. <laughs> How many have you got? Children? None. None that I know of. No, I haven't even got a wife. Lucky you. That's what I keep telling myself. <laughs> By the way, where is he? Your client. Oh, they put him in main store. I was told he had an accident. Aye, well, happened it were only a matter of time. How do you mean? Well, you can't operate a five-ton vertical hoist if you're three sheets to the wind. Come on. You mean he were K-Lied when it happened? He were K-Lied most of the time with Harry Bailey, so it's no great loss. Oh, no, not even to his wife? Well, from what I heard, he drove her to an early grave years ago. Oh. Well, I must say that if he did end up under a five-ton vertical hoist, like you say... Yeah? Then why didn't they just slip him under my door? <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, anyone thinks you own the place. She does. Ta-ra. I'm off then. Why, well, where to? Well, if you really must know, to see an old school friend of mine. Aye. What's his name? Irene. <laughs> hey? Who the heck's that? I've no idea, and I'm not waiting to find out, because I'm late as it is. Ta-ra. Yeah, but Billy, it might be an emergency laying out. Billy! Just one moment, please. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Chuck? Sorry to bother you, missus, but I have nowhere else to go. Well, I don't follow. Give it all done. I know you. Maggie Street Council School the other day. But you were the little lass who... You better come in, love. Sit down, then. Well, now, what can I do for you? I know it's a lot to ask, but you did say we should all be good to each other. Eh? Hey? Oh, of course. Could you put us up, then? I <laughs> can. Could you put us up for the night? Been chucked out, you see, for not paying rent. You mean the moment your father died, the landlord... Can't blame the landlord. He hasn't had a penny for weeks. So you're all on your own, then? I'm sorry to be a bother, but I couldn't think of anyone else to ask. Of course you can stay, Chuck. You're very kind. We won't forget this, missus. We? <laughs> I thought you said you were all on your own. No, you said that, not me.
Well, you can't be. You ain't never a scrap of food in the house. <laughs> All right. Look, you get ready for bed, and I'll go down to the chippy. <laughs> and make sure your Colin washes behind his ears before he gets into his nighty. Because you could grow half a pound of spuds behind there. What nighty? <laughs> Poor little loves. <laughs> I think she's out. It's, uh, it's quiet practice tonight. I'll just check. At the IV. And the IV. All right. Come in. Oh, thank you. I'll go on through. <laughs> Take your coat off. Make yourself at home. We've got the place to ourselves. All right, we have, haven't we? So, uh, what are we doing down here? <laughs> hey? Well, it's a long time since my Percy Optic, so um, this is the right opportunity to find out. Find out? What? If it still works. Oh, if it still works. <laughs> oh, oh, I mean. <laughs> oh, 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 Billy. Oh. Up here. You're first on the right. Oh. 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 I mean. I, oh, I fancied you ever since you let me play with your marbles behind the girls' curtains. <laughs> I did. You know you did. But this time, it's my treat. Oh, Billy. Oh, Irene. Oh, <laughs> oh Irene. Oh, Billy. Oh, oh. oh. Kids, honestly. Then whose are they? I've no idea. I've never seen them before in my life. Cobblers, you're just like all the rest. After a housekeeper on the cheek. No. Well, you've got the wrong lass. <laughs> Good night. Good night, Chuck. <laughs> Who's she? Never mind about her. And thee, who is that sleeping in my bed? Oh, and that reminds me. We're right out of porridge, too. <laughs> and tea. <laughs> I don't care what you say, Auntie. They're not stopping here another night. Why not? If I have to spend another night on that couch, I'll end up being maimed for life. This isn't like you, Billy. I thought you liked children. I do, in their right place. Not when they come between me and the best bet I've had for years. The best bet? So that's what she was. Your latest bit of fluff. <laughs> <laughs> Until she saw them kids, yes. I mean, why else do you think she took off down the street like a stick of turkey rhubarb? She thought they were mine, that's why. Well, if that's the sort of girl she is, you're better off without her. You should find someone who follows the three Gs, just like I taught you. Well, that's the point, Auntie. Eileen has always tried to live by the three Gs. What, you mean the Gospels? Playing the game and being good to each other? Not exactly. Uh, give us a Guinness and I'm game for anything. Billy Edshaw, look, I'm a good man to take you straight back home and watch your mouth out with him barking through. <laughs> Do you hear me, Billy? I heard. What's this all about, then, Ivy? Well, I'm sorry to bother you during class, Walter, but it's about the Bailey children. Ah, yes. Uh, Mildred told me you'd taken them in last night. That was very kind of you. Well, never mind about that. What I want to know is what's going to happen to them. Because we can't put them up indefinitely, can we, Billy? No. We're just not equipped to looking after the living. <laughs> it's all been arranged. They're uh, going into a home. Which home? Well, the uh, girls are going to Alma House and the boys are going to Birkinshaw's. You mean you're splitting them up? We've got no choice, I'm afraid. There just isn't room. You mean splitting up a family? What does little Mildred think about it? Uh, yeah, I, I haven't told her yet. Yes, well, uh, that's, that's as far as we're concerned. I wouldn't bank on it, Billy. Oh, you might have. Do 
wanted to split us up, but I promised me ma we'd always be together. And you did say... I know, I know. And I suppose you're all... Starving, Mrs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get my purse. Come on in. You really think I had four kids of my own, did you? Oh, why not? It's not as if you buy purple, is it? <laughs> Happen you're soon going to find out. <laughs> right, come on. Hey, you are perfectly sure that we've got the place to ourselves this time? I told you. Tonight's the night my Auntie Ivy cleans the Raver and Darbottle's thingies. Oh, oh. <laughs> thingies? Is ecclesiastical accoutrements? I go a very funny colour if she doesn't. Now, there's a novelty. <laughs> and how about yours? Now what? Accoutrements. Up to scratch, are they? Let's go and find out, shall we? Drop the stairs. I know, I know. Right. <laughs> oh, Billy. Oh. Hold on. <laughs> oh, Billy. <laughs> if only you knew how long I waited to get you alone. <laughs> Just you and me. <laughs> <laughs> Me. Whatever kind of a fellow are you, for goodness sake? You bring the poor little perishers into the world and then you disown them. I... <laughs> Good night. Good night, Joe. Hi, me! Stop it! Oh, what's the use? She'll never believe me now. Gone wrong again, that's it. Oh, dear. How sad. What a pity. <laughs> this is all your fault, Andy. Why do you have to take them back in? Because I won't have them separated, that's why. Don't tell me. Tell Lady Bountiful. And who's she when she's at home? Miss Agnes Freeman, of course. The mill owner? Mill owner, Justice of the Peace and Chairman of the Committee that runs on the lodge. Do you mean it's her who decides who they take in and who they don't? Well, that's what Irene told me, yes. Oh, well, in that case, I'll have to have a word with her, won't I? <laughs> and the best of luck. How do you mean? You don't know what she's like. Oh, she doesn't know what I'm like, neither. <laughs> this had better be important, Mrs. Uh, I'm a very busy woman. That makes two of us, Miss... Uh... The name's Freeman, as well you know. And mine's Unsworth, Mrs. Ivy Unsworth. And it certainly is important. I'll give you three minutes. <coughs> I'm waiting, Mrs. Onsworth. So am I, Miss Freeman. For what? For you to show a little common courtesy and offer me a seat. I beg your pardon? Granted. <laughs> now, the reason I came to see you is quite simple. I don't care why you've come to see me. How dare you tell me how to behave? Well, it's about time somebody did. <laughs> if your father knew the way you were carrying on, he would be spinning in his grave like a whirling dervish. My father? What do you know about my father? I know you were everything to him after your mother passed on. God rest her. And I know he was the reason why you never got married. Mrs. Onsworth, I don't know who you are and I don't care. But I do find your impertinence quite staggering. I'm Ivy May Henshaw. Agnes. Miss Freeman to you. And I've had just about enough of this discussion. Don't you remember me? Don't you remember the little tweener you used to play with at Hillside House? You were in service with the Freeman family? Right up to the time I was married. And they were very good to me. Very kind. And so will you come to that. Just a minute. Now I remember you. You used to let me hide under your bed when my governess called me for lessons. And you used to let me ride your pony. Oh, I enjoyed that. What was he called now? Suki. He was a she. <laughs> she died soon after. My mother, too. Aye. For all your money, you haven't had much of a life, have you? 
an only child, having to run a home, look after your father, and then when he died, take over the mill. I had no choice. Like father said, I had a duty, a responsibility for all the work people and their families. But that doesn't mean you had to run the place like a Victorian ironmaster. I wasn't aware that I did. I'm a hard taskmaster, certainly, but if you knew the pressures, the way you have to fight for survival. Even so, there was no call to take it out on the children. Take it out on the... What children? What are you talking about? I've never knowingly hurt a child in my life. Not knowingly. No. Jefferson, Mrs. Onsworth will be taking elevenses with me. And bring the biscuit barrel. <laughs> now, where were we? Ivy? That's right, Walter. Miss Freeman says she'll find room for them at Alma House. Yeah, well, somehow. Yes, all four of them. Eh? Oh, I don't know. She's not a bad old biddy when you get to know her. No, oh, there's just one thing. Will you remind the children to call for the things on the way home from school? <laughs> Thank you. Ta-ra! Oh, come on, Irene. Do you really think I'll bring you back for the third time knowing there's a house full of kids? I suppose not. Nobody could be that daft. Not even you. <laughs> yeah, well, I'll, I'll just make sure my Auntie Ivy is still out. <laughs> Hello? Anyone home? Yes, we are! <laughs> Good night, Irene. Goodbye, Billy. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.